So then we'll go ahead and start the meeting, 6.02. Can I ask Mr. Grivich for the Pledge of Allegiance? All right. Uh, everybody, let's start. I pledge allegiance to the flag <laughs> of the United, United States, States, States of America, America to and the to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands under God, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll move on to the roll call. Marsha Solaria. Here. David Lynn. Here. Mario Castellanos. Here. Donna Chia. Here. Jim Grivich. Here. Pauline Rosati. Here. Jessica Shoemaker. Here. All present. Thank you. And do we have any public comments for today? Good evening, Finance and Audit Committee. This is Assistant City Clerk Lisa Sherrick. I'm going to call the first caller. I'm going to place myself on mute and uh, make a phone call to Mr. Peter, Peter Dian. One moment. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. You have three Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, my name is Peter. Um, I'm a 17 year old, soon to be voter, dedicated to helping the community of West Medina. Um, when I did research into West Medina's budget, I, I saw an outpour of concern about our city. Almost 600 people, as of right now, of all ages around the city, have decided to spread my word and, and share the concern. I know all of us are scared right now. I'm scared because I'm growing up in a time like this. But we as a community need to use that fear and not change, not only change from it, but leave from it. If this outrage somehow is gone in the next few weeks, I promise that it will come back and ask us a question, a question of whether or not we're going to continue to spend 47% of our budget on the police force or if we're going to invest in a budget, a people's budget, that has proven to nationally bring down crime. Data shows that raw numbers of police have declined over the past five years, and the rate of police officers per 1,000 residents has been dropping for two decades. At the same time, the violent crime rate has also been dropping. So I want to ask my own question. Why is that violent crime has gone down, yet our funding for the police department and its pension plan has gone up and plays a huge part in where we are financially right now, which is not the best place? When the government, including us, is giving this much money to police departments, they aren't investing in public safety. They're investing in the fact that they think we are a threat to public safety. We see now what's happening in L.A. People are demanding less funds for police and more funds for themselves. They are rioting in front of Mayor Garcetti's house. I feel like if we don't act soon, we're going to end up the same, and I don't want to see that happen in my community. To anybody listening right now, it is your choice on whether or not you want to be on the right or wrong side of history, a side of prioritizing people and programs that decline crime, or a side of overfunding, systematically racist, and overall, to be honest, not needed institutions. I love West Covina, and I have been living here all my life, and I'm soon to be voting here. But I want to be able to be proud of what it stands for. And right now, I'm not sure what that is. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. And I will be calling the next speaker. Please give me a few minutes.
Your next speaker is Mr. Youssef. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Youssef Arifin, a newly registered constituent that is eligible to vote. Hello, everyone. My name is Yusuf Arifin, a newly registered constituent that is eligible to vote and a lifelong resident of West Venus. I'm now becoming more civically engaged. Yusuf, go ahead and mute your, mute your TV. Oh, sorry. Yes. Can I start all over? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Yusuf Arifin, a newly registered constituent that is eligible to vote and a lifelong resident in West Vina. I'm now becoming more civically engaged, and as I was researching the preliminary budget for the fiscal year 2020-21, I wanted to understand why the city has chosen to allocate 47% of the general funds to the police department. Can you help me understand why? Given the fiscal emergency declared by the city on May 19, 2020, what if the residents benefit more if public services, community development, and support services were given a, bill, a bigger allocation of the general funds instead of public services getting 8%, community development getting 3%, and support services getting 9%? To go even further, why is the police department spending 91% of those funds for salaries and the other 9% towards materials and services? What does that entail exactly? With the eruption of the Black Lives Matter protests across the country, what is WCPD ensuring with the money they've been allocated? Do those salaries ensure that WCPD is hiring officers that have no prior allegations of misconduct, excessive force, or racial bias in their police police history? This is all very, very important to me, and I want to ensure that West Covina is not a city that will be known for any injustice for any person of color whatsoever. It is my understanding as well that the police department's pension has bankrupted the city, and I want to understand what the gov what what our city councilmen are going to do to ensure that the city's general fund will be brought back to the eleven million dollars that it needs instead of the one million dollars that it has as a current because of the police department's pension. Thank you very much. I believe that budgets show what our city values. And I would just like to thank you very much for listening. Um, I will yield my time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will now be calling the next uh, speaker, Ms. Erin Lopez. One moment. Go ahead, Erin. Hello. My name is Erin Lopez, and I've been a proud resident of West Covina for 15 years, and I've been voting in West Covina for the past two years since I was 18 years old. According to the 2020 to 2021 preliminary budget, the city of West Covina is set to allocate a 12% pay raise for police officers. Figures alone have estimated this will cost taxpayers around $600,000 to $900,000 this fiscal year alone. I am here before you today to urge the city of West Covina to adopt the people's budget, prioritizing the needs of our community rather than unnecessary salary increase. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many residents of West Covina find the communities that they so love is gone. Small businesses are suffering, enrichment programs cease to be found, and many are without jobs. These services need more support than ever before. Additionally, I would like to address the appropriation of funds within the police department. Within the funding for police, 91% of this is allocated towards the salaries of officers, leaving only 9% going to actual services and materials. Due to the social unrest and unprecedented times we find ourselves in, how are taxpayer dollars being dispersed within the police department to ensure proper training? Why are material and services given such low funding and contract with salaries? Surely there's a better way to keep West Covina safe while also ensuring that the community is receiving an adequate amount of resources within the municipal budget. I hope the city of West Covina chooses to work in concordance with the community to guarantee that our residents are made the top priority. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm going to be calling our next speaker, Lauren. One moment, please. Go ahead, Lauren. Hello, my name is Lauren Thielen. I am a registered voter and was born and raised in West Covina. I would like to begin by thanking the City of West Covina officials, specifically the City Clerk, Lisa Sherrick, and the City Manager, David Carmony, for their quick responses to the concerns of the residents. According to the 2020 2021 preliminary budget, the City of West Covina is set to allocate a 12% pay raise for police officers. Figures have estimated that this will cost taxpayers around $600,000 to $900,000 for this fiscal year alone. I am here before you today to urge the City of West Covina to adopt a people's budget, which prioritizes the needs of the community rather than an unnecessary salary increase for law enforcement officers. We need funding for educational enrichment programs. We need funding for small business resources. We need funding for mental health resources. A people's budget would help achieve these goals I just mentioned. How can taxpayer dollars be allocated to implement these goals? I hope the city of West Covina chooses to work in solidarity with the community to ensure that the residents are made the top priority. Thank you. Thank you. This is Assistant City Clerk Lisa Sherrick. That was our last caller. I'd like to note that we have um, well over 40 speakers on the same topic. I'm going to read the letter into the record, and each and every name will be reflected in the minutes. The comments. My reason for emailing today is to urge the City of West Covina to adopt a people's budget in which would prioritize the needs of the community over a dramatic salary raise for law enforcement. The City of West Covina per the 2020-2021 preliminary budget allocates $31,163,716.47% to law enforcement, yet only 9% of this money is distributed to actual materials and services. The remaining 91% of the police budgets $30,543,800 is reserved for the salaries of officers. In October 2019, the West Covina City Council voted 4-1 to raise the salaries of police officers by 12%, which would ultimately cost taxpayers around $600,000 in this current fiscal year, and double that the following year. Despite the ongoing economic hardships many residents and small businesses in West Covina face as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the City Council has prioritized a salary increase over the essential services and support most needed by residents at this unprecedented time. I urge the City of West Covina to adopt a people's budget and increase spending in community resources, such as educational enrichment programs, small business resources, and housing, rather than an unnecessary salary increase that will ultimately cost taxpayers uh, deleteriously. We need a budget that will affect we need a budget that will effectively serve the members of our community during this unprecedented time and a budget that will make the West Covina we know and love astonishing. Thank you for your time. Through the chair, I have other comments that I will now read into the record. We have a comment from Julie Silva. Hello. Before the pandemic, there was a huge homeless problem in the city. Where are they now and what changes will be made to assist them after the pandemic? We have a comment from Jesse Wang. I reviewed the preliminary 2020-2021 budget and noticed that almost 50% of the general fund is allocated to police, 
whereas only a combined 11% is going to public services and community development. If you truly care about your community, you would defund the police department heavily and invest in the community development and public services, which does not include police. Given the current state of the nation, witnessing police brutality, harassing the people are sworn to protect, specifically black people, funding the police means funding violence against your own community. I hope you strongly reconsider the harm and violence you are perpetrating against your own community by allocating over $30 million to the police. Your community needs support and room for growth, not more harassment and harm. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Chris Miller. Dear Audit Committee, I know for a fact Jim and Marsha and I are on the same page. Dario and Colleen, I know, are on different pages. Jessica, I know you are standing on the fence based on previous comments. David and Donna, I do not know where you stand. West Covina City has never been serious about balancing the budget and being reasonable with the business owners and residents' money. Yes, our money. Money is always wasted for emergencies instead of a planned capital outlay plan. Overtime has been abused time and time in the past, yet we have never received out overtime reports since promised over two years ago. Colleen, Dario, Tony, Lloyd, and Letty all pushed for a raise for public safety with the hopes of a sales tax to pass, which would, not, which would have not helped us in these times. It is the time police hire, entry, and promote within, change culture, and be responsible with salaries instead of keeping up with the Joneses. Fire has at least hired entry level. The city needs to stop selling off property, finding creative ways to fee us to death and making sweetheart deals with buddies privatizing portions of our government. If it means furloughs, so be it, but those furloughs need to be across the board. Each public employee shall have three time cut, shall have their time cut proportionally. I do not agree with layoff. I was very angry when maintenance got cut a few years ago and others got raises. The city is waking up and not putting up with any more BS. We want a balanced budget, not smoke and mirrors per the past, and we want it now. Even high school students per, even high school students, Peter Dean is awake to our mess and urging residents to get involved and let our voices be heard. We are awake and watching and listening. Sincerely, Chris A. Miller, West Covina resident. Our final speaker is Alfred Luna. To whom this may concern, the cops do not need any increase in salaries. Why do you pay the ones who bring genuine fear to those in your community? Can we please support schools a little better? Clean the city up. Get our acts together and become a role model for other cities. I do not want to live and associate in a city whose fundamental morals set a place. Thank you. As the last speaker. Thank you. Um, did anyone from city staff want to comment on any of those at this time? This is city manager Dave Carmony. Um, I'd like to just say we very much appreciate all the comments that we received tonight and all the emails that were submitted today. It's um, heartening to know that all of these people want to offer opinions about the city budget which is the purpose of this meeting tonight. So rather than respond substantively, I believe our response will be through the staff report and budget presentation, which is on your agenda um, in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Marcia, and um, this is Dario, Councilman Castellanos. Just uh, wanted to res respond uh, to one part of the email that was sent to us uh, today multiple times. Uh, in it, it's mentioned, you know, they, what they define as a people's budget. Uh, I just want to clarify one thing. Um, the educational part of the email, um, I'm not sure if uh, the group sending the emails uh, is aware, but we as a city don't have anything to do with education in terms of like school district funding. So I'm not sure if that's what they meant, but we would uh, welcome maybe more clarification from that in the future. And as our city manager said, uh, I'd like to echo uh, the gratitude for this many people being, <clears throat> excuse me, curious and uh, wanting to be involved in our, in our budget process. That's all for now. Thank you. Any other comments before we move on? 
Okay, hearing none. So then we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Tonight we're approving two different um, minutes. Can I have a motion to have those approved or were there any comments on the minutes? Uh, no comments on the minutes. I didn't notice any anything inaccurate on them. Did anybody notice anything? Colleen Rosati, no comment on the minutes. They seem accurate. Thank you. Okay. And can I get a motion, please? For With that, I'll I'll make... Councilman Castellano, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Uh, Do I have a second? City Treasurer, City Treasurer Colleen Rosati, second to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Oh, sorry. Any opposed? None, I don't think. Maybe we should do roll call since it's a uh, phone call on future votes. I apologize that we missed the roll call. That's okay. That's, that's okay. I think it'll be easier to make sure. Can we have a roll call, please? Okay. Uh, Marcia Solario? Yes. David Lynn? Yes. Dario Castellano? Aye. Ana Chia? Aye. Jim Gervich? Aye. Colleen Rosati? Aye. Jessica Shoemaker? Aye. These are for the minutes from October 23rd. Thank you. And then we have a second set of minutes. Are there any questions or comments on those? January 22nd, 2020 minutes. Okay, can I have a motion to approve? Councilman Castellanos again, I'll make a motion to approve those minutes as well. This is David, like City Treasurer Colleen Rosati, second. The approval of the minutes. Can we have a roll call one more time? Marcia Solario? Aye. David Lynn? Aye. Dario Castiano? Aye. Donna Chia? Aye. Tim Gervich? Aye. Colleen Rosati? Aye. Jessica Shoemaker? Aye. These are all, this is for the minutes from January 22nd meeting. Thank you. So then we'll move on to the presentation. evening committee members this is city manager Dave Carmony tonight we're going to make a presentation of the preliminary budget to the finance and audit committee we have a PowerPoint presentation to share with you this evening and then we'll be available for questions our agenda for this portion of the meeting tonight is to provide an introduction and overview of the budget to review the operating budget and all of its funds, to focus on the general fund, both revenues and expenditures, to look at some financial trends over the course of several years, to discuss the capital improvement program, to talk about next steps, and then to be available for questions. By way of introduction overview, in this budget presentation, we are this evening telling the committee and certainly telling the community what it is that we're dealing with with the city finances and we're going to paint a truthful picture. I think it's important this evening 
in this budget cycle that we not conflate COVID-19 and other issues. So as part of this presentation this evening, we're gonna explain how COVID-19 has brought some of the city's finances, especially the question of its cash flows to the forefront. We're gonna talk about the structural problems, about the COVID problem, review briefly the direct and reimbursable costs of COVID-19 and um, explain the loss of major revenues that have occurred resultant of the pandemic. We're gonna move now to the goals and I'm gonna ask our finance director, Robin Bird, to go through those with us. Excuse me, we, we need to get that live, so we're gonna rewind and go over those goals again. Well, let me try and do it, Robin, and then you can pick up the next section. I gotta tell everybody, I really miss regular meetings where we can all be in one room. This telephone thing is awkward for everyone involved. Our goals for fiscal year 2021 are first to respond to the global 19 pandemic. We um, have spent most of our city attention and some limited resources we're required to do things like personal protective equipment and supplies so we could outfit properly and protect our first responders with personal protective equipment, et cetera, in the amount of about $77,000. Our second goal is to help the city achieve fiscal sustainability, financial stability, to protect public safety, to enhance our city facilities and infrastructure, enhance our city image and its effectiveness and to engage in proactive economic development. With that, I'm gonna ask our finance director to run us through the general fund expenditure. Thank you, city manager Carmony. Uh, good evening to the committee. And before we get into the guts of the budget um, document, I wanted to take a couple of minutes um, first to look at our expenditures through March 31st, um, 2020. And as you can see, our general fund expenditures um, compared to the budget were at 76.74%, which was right about where we were supposed to be, just a tad over um, three quarters of the way through the year, you should be at 75%. Next slide. The major revenue, well, the revenue assumptions that are used in this budget, um, first of all, our major revenue sources are stable. That's the assumption. Um, we did adjust our sales tax downward due to COVID-19. And I think that's an optimistic number. It could change um, and we'll be monitoring that closely. The property tax increases slightly and that also is subject to change. Those are our two major revenue sources. Our TOT, I did not adjust that at this point in time. I know it's gonna be lower. I just don't know what that number is going to um, end up being. And um, just by way of um, education, the transient occupancy taxes, the hotel tax are sometimes refer referred to as the bed tax for people that travel and stay in hotels. And then our licenses and permits is increasing and that's um, to reflect the rate increases that was approved by city council um, earlier in the fiscal year. This is city manager Dave Carmen. I'd like to add a couple of thoughts to this slide when we're looking at expenditure assumptions. And I think the major point I wanna make is that these are uncertain times. And I think the hesitancy that you heard in Robin's voice reflects that uncertainty. I know we were intending to present a, a balanced budget. And, and this one is the, the work, the, the lion's share of the work that went into preparing this budget began long before the pandemic hit and the major city revenues began to falter. But I think for the financial health of the city, it's necessary for us to continue to take a careful look at the expenditures and to look at ways to possibly reconstitute city services as we 
move into the fiscal year. So with that, we'll look at um, the expenditure assumptions, um, the budget projections in this um, 2021 budget, preliminary budget, are based on a status quo. We did not consider the effects of the pandemic in this. And the reason for that is by the time um, this hit in March, we start our budget process early January. We're well along the way and it takes a lot of man hours to put this document together. And you basically um, have to go back and almost start over um, with um, any assumptions that you were making regarding uh, the pandemic and also in the beginning of this um, things were changing daily they were changing rapidly and and we I don't think anybody knew how to budget for this um, and each day that goes by we get more information and we feel more confident with our numbers in the um, in part of this uh, presentation later we will talk about the cash flow problem that the city's having we did not consider the cash flow um, issue in this budget the fire department overtime was cut from 2.1 million last year to about 750,000 in the 2021 budget we um, assume that there will be no layoffs of personnel and we instituted a hiring freeze Um, we are submitting a balanced budget, meaning revenues are equal to our expenditures, but I need to caution everyone on this call. Um, it's balanced with one-time solutions. And uh, part of that was um, debt service payments that come out of the general fund. There were excess funds in the debt service fund, so I won't need to transfer 1.8 million. Instead, it'll be about um, 800,000. And uh, there's 90 sworn personnel uh, police officers in uh, this budget and 67 sworn firefighters. I've already said this next thing and the fire time is reduced to about 783. Um, it assumes reductions in management and management support positions. We have a community development director position uh, that vacated due to a retirement. We will not be uh, filling that. Our Assistant City Manager Mark Persico will be taking on that role. In my office, um, there's the Purchasing Manager position that recently retired and we will not be filling that position. And also my Accounting Manager is a vacant position that won't be filled this year. Looking at the operating budget for all funds, um, this chart shows that our total revenues by fund type are 117,301,000. $1,786 with the general fund making up 57% of that followed by our special revenue funds which are 21%. The total expenditures by fund type are 110,081,284 and again our general fund is 59% of that with the special revenue funds being 17%. Uh, on both of those slides, you notice that our capital projects say 0%, and those slides are going to be fixed um, by um, the 16th when we adopt the final budget. I um, got those numbers finalized last minute when this document was already going to print, so we need to put those numbers in. It'll change that slide uh, slightly. The citywide um, comparisons this graph just shows um, our total by all funds, our revenues versus our expenditures. And then this, the next slide shows um, major revenue and public safety comparison. So the blue is our property tax and our sales tax, which makes up about 65% of our budget. And um, the expenditures you can see are for um, the public safety series and that 65% of our budget doesn't make, uh, pay for our um, public safety entirely. Moving on to the general fund. Our general fund revenues are 66,672,236 and 41% of that is our property taxes, which is the same as last year. Um, our sales tax is 24% this year, which is down slightly um, from 
against last year's budget, which was 26%, and the other taxes is at 13%, where last year it was at 14%. Our property tax revenues, um, it's a graph showing it's a very stable revenue source for us, and it's going up slightly um, for next year. The sales tax revenues, as I told you, um, I shifted those downward by a million dollars. And again, we're going to have to watch this really closely. We don't know when the businesses are going to be opening for sure. Just when we thought we saw light at the end of that tunnel um, and businesses were allowed to start opening, we've had um, these other issues uh, with the protests going on in LA County. A general fund comparison, revenues versus expenditures. This just shows that in 1920 and 2021, the revenues and expenditures were equal. And then this is just a different um, graphical depiction of the general fund expenditures, which shows that police and fire make up 77% of our budget. The um, next slide shows that we're very reliant on our human resources. They make up our salaries and benefits, make up 79% of the budget, and our maintenance and operations is 21%. And, then, and this next slide is very telling. Uh, it shows the fund balance for, for the city going um, continually down until tw um, 1415, where it went up slightly. And then it's um, continued to just uh, waver a little bit, go up and down until um, the 1920. Now I talked about the cash flows um, earlier and this slide here um, shows that our estimated cash balance in June 2020 is nine point, almost $9.8 million. The top line of this slide shows the revenues that we are expecting to take in. That's based on some reductions in sales tax and looking at previous years to come up with some kind of an estimate um, for all the other revenue sources. We have um, below that our expenditures. Um, there's several lines there. Uh, the payroll, you'll notice like in July and December, um, the payroll goes up and that's because there are three payrolls in both those months. The California Joint Powers Insurance Authority, um, we have to pay them a little over 1.5 million, um, but we're gonna split that up. Um, the payment's due July 1st, and uh, we'll pay half of, the, half of the payment then and half in December. That next line is the 1.125, that's our unfunded liability. And um, typically, the city has been paying that in July. If you pay by July 31st every year, you get a discount on that money and um, say the city um, experiences some savings. We're um, still going forward looking to issue pension obligation bonds in September, so that's why there's only two payments there. And then in July, we have to make our interest payment on our 2018 bonds, which is 514,000. And so you can see going through um, on this, we get our um, estimated revenue less our expenditures. And then down below, we take our current cash balance um, minus the estimated revenues and expenditures to come up with the estimated new cash balance going forward every month. And this um, turns red or in the red, uh, which is a deficit in September. We're gonna look now um, at our capital improvement program. And I'm gonna ask Mark Persico, our assistant city manager to give that portion of the report. Yes, thank you very much, Robin. <clears throat> this is Mark Persico, assistant city manager. I'll go through a very uh, high level overview of capital improvements. And just for uh, public information, capital improvements are uh, larger term uh, projects that have a multi-year life, uh, such as uh, building improvements, playground improvements, and the like. Um, there are eight different categories of projects 
uh, won't read through the slide, but uh, from buildings to vehicles. Um, and there are within each of those uh, a number of projects that the city is proposing for the next fiscal year, which begins July 1st. Um, if all of these projects are ultimately approved, it's about $11.1 .1 million in the first year of projects across five years. We've identified funding for $43.6 million worth of projects. And then there's also, it's not on this slide, but in the budget itself, there is a list of unfunded projects. Uh, and that unfunded list totals about 40, excuse me, $38.8 million. And with that, I will uh, turn that back over to um, uh, Robin real quick. There is a... Um, slide here which shows kind of the division of uh, projects by percentage and uh, uh, the public can see that uh, the majority of capital improvements go into uh, road improvements uh, then followed by uh, sewer projects. And for uh, next steps I will turn it back over to our finance director Robin Bird. Thank you Mark. Um, so our next steps, um, we need to monitor our revenues and expenditures timely and make necessary adjustments to the budget um, as we are aware of um, any shortfalls. We need to monitor our cash flows of the general fund continually. Uh, we're going to prepare a plan to resolve our general fund structural deficit and replenish the general fund reserves for the city policy. We're going to Shift from reactive to preventive maintenance. Adopt alternative dispute resolution methods, that meaning interest-based bargaining, and adhere to adopted budget policies. And that concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that the committee might have. Hi, Robin. Colleen Mazzotti, City Treasurer. Hi, Colleen. Hey, thank you for giving this report. Appreciate it. Um, I do have a question. If you can update the folks, the information that you're given here is from March 30th of 2020, and a lot of property taxes come in thereafter. Is there a way, if you know, without putting you on the spot, how we have manage to obtain or increase or retain, let me, let me rephrase that, retain our property taxes. Are we closer to the budget mark than we were in March? I know there was some pushback from the county not wanting to give us some of the sure. property tax. Sure, so um, somewhere along the line in May or the end of April, um, Mr. Carmony and I were sitting in my office on a Friday and um, talking about the budget and how we were going to balance it. And I got an email and it said May um, 20 remittance advice, you know, it remittance property. I knew from the email that it was for property tax. So I was like, oh, they're going to tell us how much property tax we're going to get. And I opened up the email and it was a letter saying um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic property tax payments weren't made on time and it's going to cause some delays in posting those amounts so we're not going to give you your money until July and then while I was reading the first letter another letter came in from the county and it was for the redevelopment money the um, RPTTF and they said exactly the same thing except for they weren't going to give us that money until January 2021. And so, um, of course, Dave and I sprung into action and we talked um, to our lobbyist up at the state level to get a hold of the Department of Finance to see if they could withhold that money. We also called the county and I um, explained to them that the city really needed that money so that we could be able to pay our bills and make our payrolls. And um, 
I'm sure many other cities did the same thing, and I never heard from the county again, but I did get the property tax in May. Good job. Thank you. And is that the same situation for the sales tax, or is it just the fact that we don't have the sales at the two malls that we have like we did, you know, six months ago? Right. I have not heard anything from um, the state about sales tax. Um, we did receive our May property tax, and it was about half of the payment that we usually see. So it's oh. definitely down. Um, okay. And that was... Um, um, I think you you meant to say sales tax. Oh, I did, sales tax. I'm sorry. Um so it, the sales tax was definitely down for the May payment that we received. Sorry if I confused you. No, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the correction. And this is uh, Jim Grovich. Uh, I have Hi, Jim. A, this, this is just a thing off topic. Uh, we actually had an earthquake. I don't know if you folks felt it at 637. It was, no, I didn't uh, feel anything. Okay, well, anyway, that's off topic. On topic is uh, uh, the uh, issue uh, with the uh, budget that I'm concerned about, and it's no surprise to anybody because I've talked about it a lot, is uh, the overtime. I, uh, I applaud the budgeting uh, reduction in overtime. I uh, uh, the, because I've, I've said for years that it's a problem. Uh, but I'm, I'm unsure of whether the city is going to uh, effectively implement the budget. Uh, as you know, uh, year after year, the, the city regularly spends more, oftentimes way more than is budgeted in overtime. And uh, so I, uh, I sent an email to everybody uh, this morning and uh, I'm interested in the, the city presenting a, uh, a plan uh, to effectively implement that budget. Uh, I'm not hung up on a particular method, uh, but rather than just saying you, sh you should submit a plan, I thought at least I should offer a couple of ideas, which I included in my, my email. Uh, one was a thing called uh, brownout, uh, where uh, the staffing uh, uh, is not out of, uh, uh, abs absences and staffing are not automatically replaced by overtime. And I used as an example, uh, uh, the city of San Diego that implemented such a plan. And the other uh, thing I offered up as a possibility was uh, 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 using contracted ambulance services uh, uh, in place of overtime. Uh, and uh, the, uh, but those are just suggestions. Uh, the main uh, request uh, is that the uh, uh, that there be a specific plan on uh, on on how we're going to achieve the, the budget. Uh, and as you if you read the email, you know I would I'm intending on putting that in the form of a motion as a recommendation to the city council, uh, which I guess is how we do things in this committee. So that's pretty much it in terms of uh, 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 my specific uh, issue or uh, on, on in this particular budget. This is City Manager Dave Carmony. We have with us on this telephone meeting our fire chief, and I'm going to ask him to talk about the consequences of holding firm to the amount of budgeted overtime that's in this preliminary budget and also to speak briefly to the question of um, the one idea we we'd heard from a resident about um, contracting with eminence hospital for ambulances there are other models and we're not trying to present any one model tonight but i wanted to make sure that people um, understood some consequences so fire chief capelli if you're there would you please uh, respond to these questions thank you Good evening, uh, uh, City Manager Carmony, committee uh, chair and members, <clears throat> and council members. 
Uh, Fire Chief Vince Capelli here. Uh, can everybody hear me good enough? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, letting me be here today. I'm trying to explain some of the issues that were discussed. I'll, I'll first discuss uh, what um, C. Manor Carmody stated about um, the um, results of sticking to the amount of overtime budgeted uh, with the current staffing model and staffing levels. Uh, there would be only manner a way to do that would be having uh, a workforce reduction or browning out and shutting down stations or resources within a district by following that model. And that model would be once the overtime ran, ran out, it would be that we wouldn't backfill any further. And in that model, which is somewhat similar to the brownout in San Diego, um, but different, as I will explain that in a moment, uh, we would have uh, no resources in a certain area. So that's how we would, only way we'd be able to stay in the constraints of that overtime amount. Second, the brownout method in San Diego uh, absolutely is uh, apples to oranges and uh, could not uh, work in in West Covina in the current deployment model that we have. As uh, as everybody knows, we have one um, engine or truck in each district of the five districts. And in San Diego, where they have 47 fire stations, they have um, a number of them, 13, that have multiple engines or trucks in the same firehouse or district. So with that being said, if they invoke a brownout situation when members uh, have a leave time, they never remove a resource from a district. So there's always at least one resource in a district to respond. So, and in a regional method of a district as big as them, they can do that and still have good coverage and response through all the citizens in the community. In West Covina, uh, if we enacted a brownout uh, activity for deployment model, you would see a decrease in the response in a district. Uh, for example, if we browned out station three, uh, there would be no resource to respond to emergencies within that district. And we'd have to rely on a resource from another district, in West Covina. And if those, those units weren't available, we'd have to rely on a possible mutual aid uh, unit from uh, another district or another agency. Um, our area B fire, is, we're an area B for fire uh, agencies, organizations are Los Angeles County Fire and Laverne Fire. And um, we'd have to rely on them having units available to come in. And there's a delay as uh, our dispatch, they're gonna have to call their dispatcher and see if they're available. Um, and we don't want that, so at that point. So the brownout method is not comparable uh, for San Diego uh, department with the regional re approach as they have compared to us. Um, uh, and the care ambulance. So contracting with care ambulance, the only way that would be beneficial to having a contract with care ambulance through the transport portion of our advanced life support and basic life support patients uh, would be a reduction in um, workforce because uh, at this time the city of West Covina transport our own basic life support and advanced life, life support patients and we also do the billing for that and receive the ambulance transport um, costs for that contracting with a private ambulance company uh, they would do our basic life support and we would still need to have a advanced life support um, members per LA County uh, on health service policies to respond to those calls. Um, lastly, the talk about um, using imminent health as the pre-hospital care response doesn't meet the Los Angeles Emergency Medical Service Agency's response um, models uh, per their procedures manual. Uh, it's currently done by way of um, a pre-hospital care provider, fire departments in LA County that handle that. Um, I don't think we could talk Eminate Health to spending the, um, I, I couldn't even tell you how much it would cost them to buy their own ambulances, to train their personnel and get their equipment and then have the personnel to do the billing for those services. Um, I believe that the model that's widely used throughout the United States um, is similar to the model that we use. I hope that answered the uh, questions. If there's any uh, answered the uh, Tom, if there's any questions, uh, I'd be willing to answer. Uh, I just want one, one comment. 
uh, I was not attempting to prescribe a particular methodology to uh, implement the uh, overtime reduction. That wasn't my uh, intent. My, my intent was to just say that other folks out there do this kind of thing. And it seems reasonable to think that we can do something. Uh, what I was, the main purpose and the main motivation for my uh, recommendation is that I don't want the budget to be once again a fantasy that is ignored. Uh, uh, I, as I said a moment ago, it's been a practice to ignore the overtime budgets and spend considerably more than is budgeted. I, I, I'm hoping that the budget is real and that there can be a plan to actually effectively implement it as written. And that's all I'm asking for. Uh, the, uh, I, I hope I made myself clear. I was trying to say that the first time, but I felt I needed to repeat myself to, because uh, 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 I, I understand that no two things are exactly the same and you couldn't do it exactly the same way, but at least I know other people do it. And I, I think that means it can be done here too. Yes, sir. And uh, as we already know, we had engine four, um, which is uh, closed and we had two units out of station two and moved one to station four. In fact, which would be browning out uh, a unit out of station two, since we moved the um, a single resource to station four. Um, so we have done something like that in the recent years and uh, anything further would be um, not possible for the service level and the needs of the community in West Covina as our own fire department to properly get uh, personnel and resources to an emergency adequately. Thank you. This is city manager Dave Carmody again. So I think I would wrap up our response to um, Mr. Gurich's comments and, and suggestions to say there are different models and we are working hard to come up with some of those that might make sense for the for the community and the council to consider be it transport via private ambulances and running ambulance out of fire stations instead of fire engines in some cases um, private ambulances instead of city ambulances uh, another approach is regionalization of the service if we are surrounded by county fire department resources, perhaps something could be considered in, in that regard as well. And so there, there are other models and we are actively uh, working to find one that, that meets the city's needs and goals. And with that, I'll return it to the committee for other questions. Thank you. Well, I, I guess what I would like to ask for, and I'll make this as a motion, uh, I would like for the committee to recommend uh, to the city council, I'm moving that the committee recommend to the city council that uh, the city manager pursue what he just discussed in terms of uh, possible models to implement and um, uh, make a recommendation to the city council uh, about uh, an implementation that will effectively keep spending within the overtime budget. That is my actual objective. I hope, that's, uh, I hope that was clear. Do I hear a second? I'll second it for Jim. Can we have a roll call, please? Marcia Solario. Aye. David Lynn. Aye. Dario Castellanos. Aye. Jim Gervich. Aye. Colleen Rosati. Aye. Jessica Shoemaker. Aye. 
All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions on the budget from any of the committee members? Hi, this is David Lin. I do have a question. Um, first of all, thank you, Robin, and all the accounting staff for putting together this this budget. I know it's not uh, it's not easy considering the departure of the accounting manager and the purchasing manager. Um, so here is my question, based on my review of the budget. <clears throat> It, it looks like, um, I mean, again, again, I, I understand that this budget is based on, uh, on pre-pandemic time. So I guess I, I've shifted my focus into the generation of revenue. My question for you would be, um, do we have any plan or ideas in the pipeline how we could go about stabilizing or increasing our cash flow? I do understand that uh, you have a plan to issue some pension obligation bond in Q3. But other than that, do we have anything else that may be able to help with the finances? Um, thank you, uh, committee member uh, Lynn. Yes, um, we are looking at some alternatives. I did make a call to the county to um, talk to them about uh, possible advance on our property taxes. Um, I'm looking to see what that interest rate would be. And um, I just, I'm, I'm not real fond of this method. I'm running out of options here. Um, there's very few ways that you can balance a budget. You can either raise your revenues, which would mean either a tax increase or, you know, some kind of UUT or, um, you know, something that we've already gone down that road and it's been voted down or you can decrease expenditures. And we're at a point now um, where we're going to, um, if we cut any more, services are gonna be severely uh, limited to um, the residents of West Covina. So um, I, I'm not seeing any real good options right now. I want to pursue um, the tax revenue anticipation note and see what the interest rate might be. But again, that takes us okay till December and then what we have to borrow again until we get our property taxes in April. I don't see that as a long-term solution and, it, and it's costly. It, it raises our expenditures, our cost of you know doing business. So um, those are the ideas that I've tossed around. Um, the Some of the other things um, looking maybe to contract with um, LA County for our fire service. Um, as part of um, the settlement uh, with the um, Firefighters Association, we agreed to have the county look at and provide us with costs for those um, services. And it might be beneficial and good for the uh, residents of West Covina to have a regional um, model where they have uh, many, many resources where we would have proper equipment, which we haven't been able to fund for several years now. Our um, firefighters would have the proper tools that they need. Um, they would have turnouts that are not 10 years old and um, maybe, you know, could in the um, long run cause uh, some problems as far as public safety to those employees. This is city manager Dave Carmen. I'd like to add a thought or two to Robin's comments, which were, I think, direct and, and on point. Most California cities depend quite directly and quite heavily on sales tax and property tax and transient occupancy tax. Um, all of these things are typically revenues which are far more reliable and secure and predictable. We are really, um, from a fiscal perspective, anxious that the stay-at-home orders are lifted and that as they are lifted, the city do everything in its power to bring back the local economy. We got some great information today about what standards the county health department will be asking our local restaurants to follow if they go to a more alfresco style 
Um, and we're going to stand that up as soon as we can and try and issue over-the-counter administrative use permits at, at, um, on a fee waived basis so we can help our restaurants in that sector get back up. Um, the, the city's pre-existing problems that were, I think, well highlighted by the California State Auditor um, affect a lot of cities in California and, and West Covina in particular. So these issues about how much debt is the city carrying, how much uh, rainy day funds did it have or not have, um, are, are, are quite sharply in focus now. On the expenditure side, you saw by the pie charts where our money goes. I think the city's employees are its biggest asset. It's its biggest expenditure. And so if during a crisis we need to be in conversation with them about um, alternatives, we certainly have been. I think we've met with each of our nine unions unions uh, five or six times over the last two weeks. I think everybody understands the urgency. In the general fund, um, general fund expenditures are getting an extremely hard look. Um, just this week, I'll give you a, a small one data point, one small example. The city has moved its tree trimming cycle out of the citywide landscaping maintenance district to a five-year cycle. We just bid that back out but that's several hundred thousand dollars and maybe we could transition to an eight-year cycle and maybe we could just take a breath and not trim trees except on an emergency basis this year, shift those LMD monies to some other um, eligible expenditure and free up money in the general fund. And so um, I think the, the COVID-19 crisis has turned into a fiscal crisis and we are taking it quite seriously and are welcoming of any other ideas and suggestions that committee members or um, community members have for ways that the city can can find economies and efficiencies in our operation. Thank you. Thank you, David and Rob. Uh, I have one other question on the expenditure side. Uh, if you don't mind flipping to page number 60. I have a question regarding fund account number 363. David, tell me again which page you're asking about. Page Ooh. 60. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. In which account? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Page 60 on account number 363, workers' comp. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, could, could you help us understand why we are expecting a $1 million jump from the last adopted budget? So um, I can go over here and just go to a different page. The workers' compensation, um, because we're switching over this year to the California Joint Powers Insurance Authority. Um, we're going to have some trailing claims that we have. So that, that budget, if you looked at page 147, um, there's a million-dollar line item there. For our claims paid. Give me one second. Here. And the and the sure and the insurance. So uh, I think in the short run this year, um, because of those trailing bills and, and switching over to a new insurance company, um, we have to pay those premiums up front. Plus, we're going to have to pay. Um, we have a million dollar self insured retention. So we have to pay any claims that are below that, and we wanted to make sure we had sufficient funds. It may end up being lower than that. Uh, we just don't know at this point. I see. And may I know why we changed the company? If I could speak to get this is City Manager Dave Carmine again. We were um, concerned overall about the city's risk management program. And I think that the main principles of municipal risk management are avoidance and transference of risk. And so we, we looked quite closely at the city's loss experience and tried to dive into the, the reasons why. The agency that we ultimately joined, the California Joint Powers Insurance Authority, really specializes in this type of risk, the municipal risk. They've now got about 120 California cities representing about a fifth of the population of the state of California. When we first tried to become a member just over a year ago, they did a, a risk managed evaluation. They were thorough and they respectfully declined because they saw 
in terms of risk management practices that the city had a lot of things that it needed to do better and so we treated that as a to-do list and those as initiatives. We, we knocked on their door again this year. They refreshed their risk management evaluation and this year they let us in because we'd made good progress against those identified goals. They, they let us in um, with some conditions and we've got a, a timeline now when we start July 1st to satisfy their um, list in terms of risk management opportunities and policies and practices and procedures and, and risks that they've, they've, they've put in front of us and they've given us a, a pretty clear schedule by which they want us to, to meet that. So I guess a, a long answer to a short question, why did we change? I think we changed from a, a program that provided more just insurance coverage to, to a program that provided um, a full uh, risk management program. Thank you, Mr. Kamini. Any other questions before I ask some? Okay. Um, well, first, I, oh, go ahead. Uh, this is Jim Grovich. I um, uh, there were, you made a couple of comments about uh, the revenues probably over optimistic in this document. Uh, I'm just making a comment that I hope that uh, we can have a, a revised revenue estimate soon because the earlier we are able to uh, effectuate a uh, response to it, the better. Uh, it, I, that's all I can say because uh, I know waiting to the middle of the year isn't going to work. So that's my only comment. This is city manager Dave Carmody. We, we understand the comment and appreciate it and agree with it. I know sometimes too, as a city changes its way of service delivery, these changes can't be affected overnight. And in a moment like this, uh, time is not our friend. And so we're, we're acting with some high time urgency to try and uh, make some of these things happen as, as quickly as we can. And um, uh, point made, Jim, in terms of the need to keep our pulse on those major revenues as we enter the fiscal year. Hi, Dave. Um, Colleen Rosati, City Treasurer. I'm looking at this little chat that's going on here. And sorry for de the delay in asking this question. But I have observed that some of the folks that are on here have asked the question, and maybe you could clarify the reason for giving the police department and fire the increases recently. Um, this is city manager Dave Carmony. Colleen, the Raises were granted um, after some pretty careful review of where we were with respect to our pay structures, and we were giving those raises in a time which was much different than this time. I think our situation um, pretty, pretty sharply in focus then on market, and we were losing police officers at a really rapid rate to some other agencies that paid better. Um, we started to lose one and then more and then several more to Ontario for a good, bad example. It's a fine department, but we were worried that if we didn't do something and do something to move salaries to market, we would not be able to maintain shift deployment and not be able to Meet, meet a standard. The, the rule of thumb for a city, a municipality in this country would be you'd want one law enforcement officer for every thousand population. So here, I, I'd like to have 110 sworn. I think at our lowest, we were down to, um, the number escapes me, but something like 78, which is just way too thin. We're back up now to, um, I think we were at 92, two retirements, so the number is hovering now right at 90, which is, um, this week doesn't feel like too many, frankly, given what's going on in the, in the world and in our world. 
And so I would think it was market driven forces at that time. Hindsight being perfect, would I um, would I do it today? No, I wouldn't. But I think it was a move that I was prepared to recommend then, and um, and and here we are. Thanks, Dave. And you may want to mention that police and fire were out of contract for three years and did not get a COLA increase for three years either, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I think um, this is Dave Carmody again, city manager. Um, I think that's exactly right. I think um, labor relations in that moment were in a far different. Far different. I think the... Um, being out of contract for three and four years is, is a, a pretty big red flag. In fact, um, when we were initially discussing our risk management issues with the Joint Powers Insurance Agency, that was one of the items on their list as a, as a harbinger of, of things that were, were amiss. Um, we like to think we've got that turned around now. Um, if I could complement our public safety departments and the way they've been conducting themselves this week, for good example. I'm quite proud of the way we've been on the news for only a peaceful protest as opposed to some of the other communities and the things that they suffered. Um, I don't I don't know um, what what tomorrow's gonna bring with our labor negotiations, but repeating for emphasis <laughs> We're at the table now, which is where this business belongs. But we're at the table now with each and every one of our nine unions about about these same issues. We're going to try and resolve it at that at that table and not in this forum. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, hearing nobody. Um... So this is Marcia Solorio, chair speaking. I want to first commend um, our city staff, as David indicated, for putting together this budget. And I really want to commend our city council for asking some great questions at yesterday's meeting. Um, as I was looking at my list of questions I prepared, you know, they asked about half of them. I said, hey, keep your eyes on your own paper, people. But so that's good that we're asking the same questions. But um, although most of them were answered, I did want to bring up a couple just for emphasis. For example, um, yesterday was talked about the animal control, the big decrease in revenue, but the major increase in expenses. So I would like, I don't need to respond now, but I would like that to be looked at to see what we're going to do about it. Um, I did have a specific question on page 52. Marcia, if I may, this is City Manager Dave Carmody. Can we try and answer that one briefly now? And if we're not able to answer sufficiently, return with more information to you. Is that all I right? Would like that. all right? Thank you. I'm going to ask our Assistant City Manager to talk about where we are with that contract, its time term, and any comparatives with with other agencies beside our current one. This is just only with respect to, to animal control. Hi, sorry, this is Mark Brusico, Assistant City Manager. I was on mute. Um, yes, regarding animal control, we are looking at options. The city did move from uh, Los Angeles County animal control to Inland Valley um, about a year ago, and um, the revenues uh, didn't materialize as we had expected, so we are back in conversation with uh, Los Angeles County to uh, consider going back to them. Um, we haven't concluded those conversations yet, but yes, we are looking at options uh, in terms of uh, other service providers, as well as talking to Inland Valley about ways to uh, increase those revenues. Thank you. Yes, you know, just being a, a resident, um, I went on their website and because we were like, I think the dog's license is due and we never received notice. And I've, you know, heard throughout on um, social media and my neighbors that 
nobody ever really received, like they're used to receiving from the county, like, hey, your license is due. Um, no type of communication was was sent to individuals. So that might be a reason that needs to be looked at for sure. So I thank you for that update. Certainly. Okay, page 52 of the budget. Account 4647 miscellaneous reimbursement. There was quite a big increase. Could we get some background on why we're expecting such a big increase? So um, this is Robin, uh, finance director. Uh, the reason that that number is so large this year, um, we go through for um, fund number like 361, which is the risk management, 363, which is the workers' comp, and those funds mainly come from the general fund and get transferred over, and we allocate those costs out, as well as um, according to our cost allocation plan, we add, um we allocate the admin costs um, for services such as finance that um, supports all the other departments. And as we ran out of time in this budget, um, some of those numbers got over allocated because we went through several ren renditions of it. So we decided to, instead of, because we have to reprint all the pages and everything, every time we do that allocation, uh, we decided to just do it in this fashion and show it as the reimbursement back to the general fund and several other funds, as a matter of fact. Thank you so much for that. Okay, on um, page 149, where it discusses the police department. Um, under patrol division, it states, two thirds of all foreign officers work in the patrol division which focuses on patrolling city streets, responding to calls for service and identifying potential crime problems. Um, and when I look at page 151, which shows the org chart of the police department, it seems a little middle heavy in terms of FTEs and lieutenant, sergeant, I think that's captain, your abbreviations. Is there someone on the call today that could kind of give us a little background on how, how their duties differ? And are those part of the, the number of police on actual patrol? Dave Cormier. I don't have the chief of police on this call tonight, um, but I can certainly uh, return to you with answers to those questions. Um, I know we're quite aware in terms of deployment of the need to put as many resources as we can in the in the streets at all time. Um, but let me hold the, the response to that one for the for the chief of police and uh, return to you if I may. Thank you. That would be great. And so lastly, I think we want to address kind of the elephant in the room. Um, it's been very exciting to hear so much community feedback on this budget. Um, as I wasn't going to mention, but a few days before this meeting, I did send an email to um, Robin and um, our city manager, because as being an auditor in my past, I've audited quite a few cities. And typically, um, you see the budgets tend to have the same trends, right? And for public safety, most of the time, well, at least back then, at least 50 cents on the dollar automatically is public safety. Tend to run to the 50 to 60% range in those years. I've noticed it's increased slightly since then. And I proposed a question as to us for the size of our city and the size of our budget, our public safety number as was previously mentioned is almost 80%, which gives us no wiggle room for anything else. And so, although I commend the city manager and all the rest of the city staff working with the bargaining units and looking at the departments for cost savings, it seems like, why are we not talking about going for the meat? Like we know where the meat is of the expenditures. What are we doing there? So are we talking about, you know, some cities are doing across the board uh, salary cuts, which Obviously, we never want to hear, but if that's what's needed, uh, having employees pay into their uh, 
retirement benefits, like Mr. Grivich has mentioned in the past, um, any information could you give us regarding those discussions? This is City Manager Dave Carmody. I appreciate the question and I acknowledge that the pathway forwards for West Covina and for local governments in California really requires that we pay serious attention to these issues. Um, if, if we are honest with each other, and I think we are, about what's happening to our major sources of revenue and our different expenditures, um, we, there's no way we can ignore um, those impacts on our, on our services we provide. We've, we've pinpointed for you tonight which, which of our major revenue streams are at risk, and we are quite focused on, on cash flow and talking about what available options there are. Um, we are going to try hard through this process to, to build consensus around these choices. I know this is not going to be an easy time. I guarantee it's not an easy time to be a city manager. It's not going to be an easy time at all to be a city council member. Um, but I think everybody knows that that early action is is um, is a necessity. It's it's not going to be a choice. We, as I mentioned, are in discussions. We haven't just begun to initiate conversations with our labor unions and our other key, you know, stakeholders and creditors. But we are. Um, in, in, into it up to our eyeballs with conversations that I think properly belong at the table, and I'm going to leave them there for now. I'm, I will give you a small example. We immediately went to some of our major um, private vendors who gave us 5 and 10% reductions um, off our bills um, immediately. But we are going to have to, in terms of the public safety piece, which is where most of the money is here, we're going to have to come up with maybe different schedules, different deployment models, different ways to, to fund these, these frontline first response services, to staff them um, if, if we come up short of, of, our, of our money and, and have an inability to pay for them. So it's, um, it's as serious as can be and, and we're taking it, taking it very seriously. I, uh, I know the council has um, given us some pretty clear direction about that. And we're going to be uh, in conversation with them um, again, a, a special meeting again just next week. So we're going, to, we're going to keep on it, I promise you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I think the residents also would greatly appreciate that it's being discussed and that their voices are being heard. That said, any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, um, I believe there's a motion for this budget. It's quite long. Do I need, do I have to read the whole thing or is that Lisa that reads it? I'm just going to ask for a motion to approve this preliminary budget. This is Councilman Castellanos, so I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary budget. Yes, I'll the claim. I'll second it. Okay, can I have a roll call? Marcia Solario. Aye. David Lynn. Aye. Dario Castellano. Aye. Anachia. Aye. Jim Grivich. Hi. Pauline Rosati. Hi. The shoemaker. Hi. All, all in favor. Chairman, Thank this you. is City Manager Dave Carmody again. May I make um, one more comment before we move move past this point? may have lost the chairman. The, the point I wanted to make was regarding future citizen input. We have um, posted a budget survey on the city's website. Uh, we've got a banner on our homepage to, to promote the survey and we'll get out a social media push um, advertising it uh, tomorrow morning. And we scheduled a um, community meeting um, for next Tuesday evening that we might be able to 
encourage residents or, or interested people to give us further comments about the budget before it returns to the council um, at their next meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think we just need to ask if there's any new business before we can adjourn. Is there any new business? Marcia Colleen. No, I, I don't think so. Yes, Colleen. I, I, I have a question. Are we going to have, when are we going to have our next meeting? Jim Gervais. Uh, I would say let's schedule that at the budget workshop. Uh, I'll talk to David and Robin and city staff and we could schedule that soon. Okay. So I have a Colleen. I'm side. thinking, go, go, go ahead, Colleen. This isn't a question, it's more of an information. Um, for those folks that are listening and especially some of the younger folks that have joined us. If you have questions about this audit and finance committee, I just wanted to give you a little background on it. It, it actually consists of seven members, uh, the city treasurer, two city council, and four members of the public. Each have a two-year term with the exception of the city treasurer. So if any of you are interested in getting more involved, which it seems like you are, which is good news, thank you. Um, you may want to look for future postings when opportunities arise. And if you're interested in applying, I suggest you do so. And if you have any other questions regarding this committee and or how to get involved, you can reach out to the city manager, Dave Carmony, and or probably Robin as well. So I just wanted to interject that. I see some interest on this little chat thing I'm watching as to how you get involved. So I wanted to bring that forward. This is Robin. Um, I, I just wanted to mention tonight also that there are three members that um, their terms are up. Um, Mr. Jim Grivich, um, Marcia Solario, and Council Member Shoemaker. And um, I think in the past, the way this has been done is to post these positions and take applications and then the City Council appoints. Uh, I believe you're right, Robin. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, but usually about this time of year, May, we, we change have chairs. Meetings. Correct. Right. Yeah. That was yeah. the other thing that I wanted to um, to mention tonight is usually I think we do it at this meeting um, due to um, the delay from previous meetings. We decided to postpone that till the next meeting, and we'll, we will agendize that. And um, okay have that switch at that time. That's, that's more than fair. Marsha's done a great job. Thank you, Marsha, for orchestrating. Thank you all. And then the last thing of business that I think um, I just wanted to check in with everybody. I know on the last meeting that we ended up canceling because of all the chaos that was going on. <laughs> um, we were the, the committee had asked for an update on city audits, and I was interested to see if um, you all are still interested in that or um, you have listened to the meetings and, and gotten the information elsewhere. I, I, this is Jim Gorich. I, yes, I'm interested, and in, there's some specific issues in the audit that I would like to uh, uh, have some information about which audit, Jim? One that was completed. We never actually the, talked about it. The fire audit? No, uh, no, the uh, the regular state audit. Uh, st uh, oh, comprehensive. The capper? <laughs> yeah, comprehensive <laughs> okay. annual financial report. I think that's its fancy okay. name. Okay, I don't have that report with me tonight, but I will try to answer any questions that I can. Well, there was two material weaknesses and a significant deficiency. And it looked like, based on what I could see uh, in the document, that simply the tasks that were supposed to be done were never done. At least that's what it looked like. But I, it wasn't obvious. It wasn't, I wasn't sure. So I wanted to know what that was all about. 
So um, those findings that were in there were repeats from the previous year. One of them had to do with um, the turnover in staff in the finance department. I don't know how I fix that because it seems like I keep losing more and more people. Um, I don't remember the specifics of the other comment, but well, I know they were well, both repeats because I was very upset about those comments. Well, I, I guess I just have an observation. If if we're not able to provide staffing to account for the special funds, perhaps we shouldn't have those funds. I, it wasn't a very big amount of money involved. It seems like it isn't worth the trouble. I guess I'm just making. It's just an observation. Um, to have a so material noted. weakness, uh, you know, to have a material weakness over something that isn't big, and you don't have the staff to do it anyway. Uh, that's that's a, that's it. That's, that's all I have to say. Okay. That's all I had for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Remind me, do I make a motion to adjourn? That's my last meeting. Yes. Okay, so motion to adjourn at 7.38. Do I have a second? Is a statement, <laughs> I would second it. All right, so meeting adjourned. <laughs>